So let's suppose that we want to find all the different stereoisomers of the sugar aldotetrose. So let's begin by determining what the structure is of aldotetrose. So the aldo part of aldotetrose means that we have an aldehyde. So the top portion of the straight chain sugar contains a carbon oxygen double bond as well as an H atom. This is our aldehyde per portion given by this aldo. Now we have a total of four different carbons because tetros means four. So one carbon, two carbon, three carbon, and four carbon. The final carbon of our aldotetros, or any aldose for that matter, contains the primary alcohol group. So we have this carbon bonded to two H atoms as well as to our hydroxyl. Now, what about these two carbons? Each one of these two carbons contains two different groups. We have an H atom as well as the hydroxide. So let's suppose that this particular stereoisomer contains our two OHs that point to the same side to the right side. And so on this side, we have our two H's. Now, the question is, this is one stereoisomer, how many are there? So to calculate the total number of stereoisomers, we have to determine how many stereogenic carbon atoms we have on the aldotetrose. So this carbon is not stereogenic because it does not contain four groups. And this one is not stereogenic because out of these four groups, two of them are exactly the same. But these two carbons are stereogenic because they each contain four groups that are different. So we have one, two stereogenic carbons. And that means we can use that information to calculate the total number of stereoisomers by using this equation. So two to the power of n, where n is the number of stereogenic carbons. So this means two to the power of two because we have one, two stereogenic carbons. And so we have a total of four stereoisomers of the aldotetros. Okay, so now that we know this and we know one of these isomers, let's determine the other four, the other three. So this is part of a category of molecules known as the d aldotetros and that's because this final, this last stereogenic carbon contains the OH group that points to the right side. So in fact, the second molecule the second stereogenic carbon will also be a D aldotetros, but in this case, our hydroxy group on this carbon will be pointing to the other side. So this is the second stereogenic carbon that we're going to have. And both of these molecules fall into a category known as D aldotetros because the D part means uh, tetros because the D part means these two hydroxy groups or this hydroxy group on the final last stereogenic carbon right next to our primary alcohol group points to the right side. Now we can also look at the L aldotetros. The L aldotetros contains the OH pointing to the other side, to the left side. So that means we have our aldehyde group as always. And on the final carbon, we have our primary alcohol. Now, because we're looking at the L aldotetros, our OH now points this way. And let's suppose that the OH on this carbon also points this way. So this is another stereoisomer. And the final stereoisomer is also our uh, L aldotetros, but in this case, this group basically points in the other direction. So this OH group still points this way, but now this carbon has the OH group that points in the other direction. 
So these are the four different types of stereoisomers for aldotetros. So these two are part of the D aldotetros and this is part of the L aldotetros.